four quarters of Notre Dame football. He's met by Alohi Gilman with a nasty hit. Chase Claypool reaches across the goal line. Touchdown, Iris. Still moving. Chris Fink inside the 20 yard line. Down he goes. No matter what happens, we stay together. And intercepted by Jalen Elliott. Look, a great fake. Touchdown. Notre Dame falls to 5-2 after losing to the Michigan Wolverines in Ann Arbor, 45-14. Welcome to Inside Notre Dame Football, presented by Tyrac.com, along with former Irish linebacker Corey Mays. I'm Darren Pritchett. Corey, rough weather conditions in Ann Arbor and a tough outcome for the Fighting Irish. By a week rest and Russ, on the road, and in the rain, creating a perfect storm for this Michigan uh, team to really dominate this Notre Dame team this week. Well, it's a great rivalry between Notre Dame and Michigan. We won't see it for 14 years, so let's check out the highlights from the first half from the Big House in Ann Arbor, Michigan. 5-1 and one, Notre Dame taking on 5-2 and two. Michigan in the first half. It was heavy rains for Ian Book. And the Fighting Irish as they look to beat Michigan in Ann Arbor for the first time since 2005. Good start. Look at that catch by Chase Claypool, 19 yards on a first down. Yeah, you're worried about this Irish offense coming off this bye week where they keep that same momentum. You see the aggressiveness here by Chase Claypool, and everyone's thinking, oh, well, this is going to be a great game. And a break for Notre Dame as they punted the football away. Jay Bramblett was hit, roughing the punter, and Notre Dame gets the ball back. You have to be very careful right here. As a defender, you're trying to go for that block, but you got to make sure you avoid the kicker at all costs. Unfortunately, the drive stalled a second time. On third down, Michigan quarterback Shea Patterson had the pass batted away by Asmar Bilal. Then Notre Dame blocks the punt. It's going to be Notre Dame football, but the ball is touched. That means it's a live ball, and Michigan recovered. That sets up a 21-yard field goal by Jake Moody, and with 5.25 to go in the first quarter, 3-0 Wolverines. Ian Book, under pressure, rolls to his left, hit as he throws the football, the ball wobbles down the field, barely incomplete. This Michigan defense was after Book all night, and it made it difficult for him to get these completions. Hassan Haskins had a very good game against the Irish defense. Here he picks up 25 yards to the Notre Dame 22. Second quarter action, freshman Zach Charbonnet, a seven-yard touchdown run. It's 10-0 Wolverines. Book under siege once again, lobs it down the far sideline, incomplete pass, and Notre Dame is forced to punt once again. This defensive pass rush showed no hospitality for the visiting Irish to the big house. Shea Patterson, a keeper off the left side. He'll scamper 22 yards to the Notre Dame two-yard line on second down and goal. Charbonnet gets the handoff, touchdown Michigan. It's 17-0, Wolverines with 9.52 to go in the first half. Notre Dame enters Michigan territory, third and three. Tony Jones Jr. dropped for a one-yard loss. Notre Dame will go for it on fourth down and four. Pressure coming. Book throws it quickly to Armstrong, incomplete, and Michigan takes over on downs. The Michigan offense actually stalled late in the second quarter. A little momentum for Notre Dame on third down and four. Patterson is sacked. The ball came free. Michigan recovered the fumble at halftime. Michigan led the Fighting Irish 17 to nothing and some shocking rushing numbers in the first half. You didn't expect any of this from this uh, Irish offense coming into this game. We had seen them hitting their strides with Tony Jones having three 100-yard games. We thought this was going to be a slugfest, an old-school classic Notre Dame-Michigan game. We'll take a look at the second half highlights from Michigan Stadium next on Inside Notre Dame Football, presented by TireRack.com. Inside Notre Dame football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame football presented by TireRack.com. He's Corey Mays. 
I'm Darren Pritchett. So at halftime, the Irish trailed Michigan 17-0. And Corey, the Irish had 52 yards of total offense in the first half. Despite that number, there was still a really good chance for Notre Dame if they made a couple of plays early in the third quarter, they'd be right back in this contest. He was still in the game, despite the lopsided uh, stats uh, going into the second half. You know what? You believe in this moment, right? You're coming off this bye week. You're like, all right, guys, it's time to wake up. We're still in this game. Let's go do this. So you had to do some things offensively. The good news is the rain stopped as the third quarter got underway at the Big House in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Notre Dame starts the third quarter, trailing the Wolverines 17-0. Good start for the Irish defense, third down and four. The handoff and Asmar Bilal brings down the ball carrier and Michigan forced to punt. Notre Dame offensively, Book lobs it down the near sideline, looking for his tight end Cole Komet. It's intercepted, but hold everything. Pass interference against Michigan. New life for the Irish offense, and that allows Chase Claypool to go back to work. The refs gifted a penalty on this play, and Chase Claypool takes advantage of it. Looking like Superman on this play. Scoring opportunity in the red zone, and Book rolls right, throws back to the left. Touchdown, Cole Komet from seven yards out, and the Irish trailed 17-7. This Michigan defense was fast flowing all night, so it was great to see an adjustment from the Notre Dame offense for some misdirection, and it worked. Touchdown, Irish. The Irish had some momentum, but this play really changed things. Haskins, 49 yards. He takes it all the way down to the Notre Dame 26. Later on in the drive, a couple of defensive pass interference calls kept the drive going for Michigan, and they cash in. It's an eight-yard touchdown catch by Donovan Peoples-Jones, 24-7 Michigan, and they go on to beat the Fighting Irish 45 to 14. This Notre Dame defense has been so good under Clark Lee. In fact, entering this ball game, they had gone 20 consecutive games without allowing more than 30 points. Michigan broke that streak today, so this was a very uncharacteristic performance by the Irish defense. Very uncharacteristic. It was uh, just something very erratic for the Irish uh, defense. They weren't fitting right. Uh, they were missing tackles. It just, it just wasn't right tonight. What do you think is going to be the key for the Irish defensively after they look at the film, get a little practice in before getting ready for Virginia Tech at Notre Dame Stadium? I think just a, a week of being physical, a, a week of being tough. I think this, is, this was the difference in this game is just the physicality. I thought this Michigan offensive line really brought it, brought the fight to the Fighting Irish this week, and I think they will uh, bounce back and do the same to Virginia Tech this week. The Irish offensively, they score 14 points in the ball game, 52 yards of total offense in the first half. They just could never get going. Going. Yes. Is it easy to find rhythm in practice, or is that something that basically has to come in the game? You have to have a little success and get rolling from there. I think, you know, it's hard to find rhythm in practice, especially on a bye week, right? So you, you have all your momentum. You finally get your pieces in place. You finally get the running game going, and then all of a sudden it's a break. So now this week, they'll get back to being physical. They'll be, get back to the <laughs> basics this week. So I, I really look for them to bounce back against Virginia Tech as well. Tough weather conditions you played in situations like this. Is it as tough mentally as it really is just dealing with the rain? I think it is. Uh, but, again, it looks like uh, Michigan was more ready yeah. to come into this game than Notre Dame was. Uh, it looks like Notre Dame just showed up kind of for the game, and Michigan had something to prove. Michigan gets it done. They take down the Fighting Irish 45-14. to Stick around. More Inside Notre Dame football is coming up. Jack Nolan with Coach Kelly after Notre Dame's disappointing loss to Michigan. We should begin with the beginning of the game. Miserable conditions, but Michigan established their running game, grabbed the momentum, and they carried it throughout the game. Yeah, they got off to a great start, and uh, that really was what I had prepared our football team really all week, that uh, you know Michigan was going to get off to a, a good start. Uh, they were going to come out hungry, and uh, we were not up to... Uh, the task and uh, give them credit. They were the better football team tonight. With the trajectory that your team has been on in recent years, this is unexpected for outside observers and everybody in this room. So what do you do now as you head forward this week? Teams bounce back before and they really don't have any choice but to bounce back now. Yeah, well, you know, certainly, you know, you look at, you know, 
why did we not play to our identity? I mean, you know, we have cast who we are over uh, a string of uh, a couple of years now, um, really, almost three years. So to play uh, like this tonight is is a head scratcher. Uh, but we'll go back. We'll uh, we'll. we'll certainly talk to our players individually, collectively, as units. Um, we'll meet as a staff. And, you know, the, these are the kind of nights where, you know, there's not answers for everything after, after a night like tonight. Uh, we didn't coach well enough. Uh, we didn't play well enough and, and give, uh, give Michigan credit. But we'll, we'll, we certainly will have um, a rally to this. Um, our guys are very prideful. They know what the standards are at Notre Dame, and this certainly wasn't up to the standards. You just spoke to the team, and you very clearly took responsibility for what happened tonight. But they also have to motivate themselves and take some responsibility. Yeah. And before you got in there, Aloe Gilman did gather the entire defense and basically went through those things about we need to remember this, we need to figure out why, and we need to make sure just what you said, but he hadn't heard it yet, that this would never happen again. Well, we got a two-hour bus ride, and that bus ride, as I told them, better be one that is focusing on why did we not play to our identity and that is uh, with a great physicality uh, with great energy we were missing all those pieces and in a big game like this against a great rival in Michigan on national television to be missing all those pieces tonight is as I said is uh, perplexing but we'll we'll figure it out and uh, we'll get back at it and um, you know, make sure that uh, when we get an opportunity to play again, that uh, we play to the standards that we have set. This is a difficult question right now because you do need to go back and look at the videotape and break this down to figure out exactly what happened. But what is this week like? Do you go back to the drawing board on a lot of things or do you just reinforce what you had been doing so well leading up to this game? I mean, we look, we, we've got good football players. We've shown ourselves over a long period of time as to you know, who we are, and we just didn't play to that. So really, it's more about why didn't that occur? Was it poor preparation on my part? Did we not have the right game plan? Uh, were players in the right position? Uh, why weren't some of our players playing at the highest level? So, you know, all those things. This isn't, a, this isn't a start over. This isn't a rebuild. This is a good football team that did not play well tonight. And quite frankly, we didn't coach well enough as well. And, and so this is collectively a coacher, coaches and players together um, getting a chance to figure out some things. And we'll get back after it on Monday. And then Saturday, you're back at home against the Virginia Tech team that seems to be getting better with each week. Yeah, and that will be certainly the thing that we'll have to, um, you know, use as a motivating factor as well is that, you know, we've got a great opportunity to win our last five games and play in a New Year's Six game. And, um, you know, certainly two losses takes us out of the chance to play in a, uh, a playoff. But, uh, you know, a New Year's Six is, a, is still a big prize for us. And, uh, but more importantly, is getting back to being who we are. <laughs> and that will be the focus this week. The monogram is a brand that will, you know, stand the test of time. When you see the monogram, you know exactly who it is. It's Notre Dame. The interlocking emblem is on our chest. And it's something that we fight for. And I think that it holds so much weight. Every time I wear something Notre Dame, every, every time someone on the team has this Notre Dame monogram on. You can go anywhere in the country, honestly, in the world. If you're wearing it, someone's gonna say something. You know, it's a community, not just within one place, but within the world. When you go to airports, people, oh, you gonna earn it? Yeah, I do, I mean, I was a, a 67 grad. Like, everyone's gonna say, you know, Notre Dame, class of this, that, and then next thing you know, your friends, and you know, it's just a way to kind of bring everybody together. And that monogram truly holds a bunch of tradition in a a bunch of really, really great people have come past this. So when you're wearing that monogram, you have to wear it with respect and dignity because it's way bigger than you. It's way bigger than any of us. Uh, it just shows you, you know, how deep the connections are, how deep the tradition is, and just how fortunate we are, you know, to kind of be a part of it now. I actually moved here when I was eight years old from Nigeria. Coming here, my dad always preached to me, like, this isn't like vacation if we were coming here because we want you to set yourself up for a better future and get your education. So I think that was one thing that my dad always kind of stuck in my head. I picked up football in eighth grade. I played safety. Wasn't very good and then went into high school, went ninth grade. 
my high school head coach just kind of just kind of tossed me in. So I think I started my path in ninth grade playing defensive end, and that just took off. My brother was probably one of the most mature dudes I was uh, probably around from a young age. He's always looked out for me. So like him coming here was obviously like a huge step because I felt like I kind of wanted to kind of model myself after him. Just wanted to be that mature guy that just went the right way in life. And that really turned my head, kind of got me to mature up a little bit and just make the ultimate best decision for me, which is coming here. Coming to Notre Dame and running up that tunnel and just hearing all 80,000 people screaming. Not many people get to come out to a stadium and play every Saturday in a stadium where it's sold out. So Notre Dame, every every time it's, it's something new. It's You never get used to it. So I think a lot of guys do appreciate the fans coming out. I, I appreciate the fans coming out and it's something you never take for granted. Because we believe that Notre Dame is the best. We believe that we're the best at everything. There's a standard that you come here to graduate and win a championship and that's what we're trying to do here. Let's take a look at this edition of the Play of the Week. First and 10, shotgun, drops back, looks to the near sideline, floats it for Claypool, oh, catches it inside the 10 and goes out of bounds. It'll be first and 10 Irish. The 6'4 Claypool went over the 6'0 Thomas and brought it down, gain of 25. First and goal from the eight. Well, what I say, Ian Buck's got to find the man-to-man. -man. He did that. They're leaving Chase Claypool with about a five-inch height advantage. And Chase Claypool catching the ball like he's doing the O in Ohio with one foot in. He's had two big grabs already for the Irish tonight. It's time for this week's TireRack.com Question of the Week. The question comes from David Walters from Boise, Idaho. Coach Kelly, what tools do you and your staff use to measure individual and team progress each week during the season? So we have a number of um, individual things that we do in the weight room um, to test our guys physically. Uh, on the field itself, um, you know, we're monitoring all of our players in terms of their day-to-day -day kind of uh, practice habits. So videotape, um, corrections, um, all of those things go into our evaluations. Um, so it's both in the weight room, on the practice field, uh, allow us to uh, evaluate them every single day. When I think of the Golden Dome, I think of everyone else who's been here with that Golden Dome, how long Notre Dame has been here, all the great people that have come through Notre Dame and done such great things after their time here. You know, sometimes I like to just go walk by the Golden Dome like I do with the Grotto, and it just reminds me of how thankful I am and how appreciative I am that uh, I'm here in Notre Dame. When you walk down Notre Dame Avenue and just look straight ahead, it's, it's the dome that just shows how special Notre Dame is, it just shows how just the family and just the representation of Notre Dame itself, Notre Dame football, just the Golden Helmets, from the Golden Helmets, the Grotto, to everything. I think it's just a representation that Notre Dame is here and with Mary being on top, I think she's looking over everybody and just knowing that you have somebody to look on to and lean on. I remember coming here on my visit and we were driving down Notre Dame Ave, looking at the Golden Dome. It was probably about 11 or 12 o'clock at night. And uh, just seeing the Golden Dome for the first time at night and seeing the sparkles, once when I saw that, I knew that this place was special. Inside Notre Dame Football continues, presented by TireRack.com. Corey, what's the best way for the Irish to put this game behind them? Well, the Virginia Tech team is coming in 5-2 and two and a three-game winning streak. So they're used to winning at this point, and they love the taste of that. So this Notre Dame defense and offense has to step up and be very physical this week and get back to what uh, Brian Kelly said in his press conference, being physical in their identity. If you're a coach this week for Notre Dame, do you show a lot of film? Do you show less because of the outcome of this game? I think, you know, you show the film, you show the teaching points, you throw it away, and you get ready for Virginia Tech because I, there's nothing else to really learn from it. You know you weren't physical at the point of attack, and you know you have to get better this week, and no better feeling than with a win. Still an opportunity to go to a New Year Bowl six game for this Fighting Irish football program. Final score from Michigan Stadium, the Wolverines 45 and the Fighting Irish 14. For Corey Mays, I'm Darren Pritchett. Thank you for joining us for Inside Notre Dame Football presented by TireRack.com.
Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Coca-Cola, Under Armour, Gatorade, Vivid Seats, Canon, and Sirius XM.